During British Summer Time BST, civil time in the United Kingdom is advanced one hour forward of Greenwich Mean Time GMT in effect, changing the time zone from UTC plus 0 to UTC plus 1, so that evenings have more daylight and mornings have less. BST begins at 1 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time on the last Sunday of March and ends at 1 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time 2 o'clock British Summer Time on the last Sunday of October. Since the 22nd of October 1995, the starting and finishing times of daylight saving time across the European Union have been aligned. For instance, Central European Summer Time begins and ends on the same Sundays at exactly the same time, that is 2 o'clock Central Europe Time, which is 1 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. Between 1972 and 1995, BST began and ended at 2 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time on the third Sunday in March and fourth Sunday in October. The following table lists recent past and near future start and end dates of British summer time. Topic: <inaudible> Instigation and early years. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Early history. British Summer Time was first established by the Summer Time Act 1916, after a campaign by builder William Willett. His original proposal was to move the clocks forward by 80 minutes, in 20-minute weekly steps on Sundays in April and by the reverse procedure in September. In 1916, BST began on 21 May and ended on 1 October. Willett never got to see his idea implemented, having died in early 1915. Periods of deviation In the summers of 1941 to 1945, during the Second World War, Britain was two hours ahead of GMT and operating on British Double Summer Time BDST. To bring this about, the clocks were not put back by an hour at the end of summer in 1940. In subsequent years, clocks continued to be advanced by one hour each spring and put back by an hour each autumn until July 1945. The clocks were brought back in line with GMT at the end of summer in 1945. In 1947, due to severe fuel shortages, clocks were advanced by one hour on two occasions during the spring, and put back by one hour on two occasions during the autumn, meaning that Britain was back on BDST during that summer. An inquiry during the winter of 1959-60, in which 180 national organizations were consulted, revealed a slight preference for a change to all-year GMT plus one, but instead the length of summer time was extended as a trial. A further inquiry during 1966–67 led the government of Harold Wilson to introduce the British Standard Time experiment, with Britain remaining on GMT plus one throughout the year. This took place between 27 October 1968 and 31 October 1971, when there was a reversion to the previous arrangement. Analysis of accident data for the first two years of the experiment, published by HMSO in October 1970, indicated that while there had been an increase in casualties in the morning, there had been a substantially greater decrease in casualties in the evening, with a total of around 2,500 fewer people killed and seriously injured during the first two winters of the experiment, at a time when about 1,000 people a day were killed or injured on the roads. However, the period coincided with the introduction of drink driving legislation. The estimates were later modified downwards in 1989. The trial was the subject of a House of Commons debate on the 2nd of December 1970 when on a free vote, the House of Commons voted by 366 to 81 votes to end the experiment. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Debates on reform. Campaigners, including the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents Rospa, and Environmental Campaigners 1010, have made recommendations that British summertime be maintained during the winter months, and that a double summertime be applied to the current British summertime period, putting the UK one hour ahead of GMT during winter, and two hours ahead during summer. This proposal is referred to as single, double summer time. SDST, and would effectively mean the UK adopting the same time zone as European countries such as France, Germany, and mainland Spain Central European Time and Central European Summer Time. ROSPA has suggested that this would reduce the number of accidents over this period as a result of the lighter evenings. 
Rospa have called for the 1968-71 trial to be repeated with modern evaluation methods. Point one zero tens lighter later. Campaign, in addition to publicizing the risk reductions described above, also highlights the potential energy benefits of single, double summer time, arguing that the change could save almost 500,000 tons of CO2 each year, equivalent to taking 185,000 cars off the road permanently. These proposals are opposed by some farmers and other outdoor workers and by many residents of Scotland and Northern Ireland, as it would mean that in Northern Britain and Northern Ireland the winter sunrise would not occur until 10 o'clock or even later. However, in March 2010, the National Farmers Union indicated that it was not against single, double summer time, with many farmers expressing a preference for the change. Other opponents of daylight saving measures say that darker mornings, especially in Scotland, could affect children going to school and people travelling to work. Others have proposed the abolition of BST entirely, favouring GMT all year round. Advocates of this cite in their support a lack of practical gains from the adjustment of time, arguing instead that changes in school or business hours would achieve similar results without disrupting a scientific standard. Current statute and parliamentary attempts at change The current arrangement is now defined by the Summer Time Order 2002 which defines BST as the period beginning at 1 o'clock, Greenwich Mean Time, in the morning of the last Sunday in March and ending at 1 o'clock, Greenwich Mean Time, in the morning of the last Sunday in October. This period was stipulated by a directive 2084 EC of the European Parliament which required European countries to implement a common summer time as originally introduced in 1997 in directive 9744 EC in part because of Britain's longitudinal length debate emerges most years over the applicability of BST and the issue is the subject of parliamentary debate in 2004, English MP Nigel Beard tabled a private member's bill in the House of Commons proposing that England and Wales should be able to determine their own time independently of Scotland and Northern Ireland. In 2005, Lord Tanlaw introduced the Lighter Evenings experiment bill into the House of Lords, which would advance winter and summer time by one hour for a three-year trial period at the discretion of devolved bodies, allowing Scotland and Northern Ireland the option not to take part. The proposal was opposed by the government. The bill received its second reading on 24 March 2006, however, it did not pass into law. The local government association has also called for such a trial. <laughs> <laughs> Daylight Saving Bill 2010-12 The Daylight Saving Bill 2010-12, a private member's bill by Conservative backbench MP Rebecca Harris, would have required the government to conduct an analysis of the potential costs and benefits of advancing time by one hour for all, or part of, the year. If such an analysis were to find that a clock change would benefit the UK, the bill required that the government should then initiate a trial clock change to determine the full effects. In 2010, Prime Minister David Cameron stated he would seriously consider proposals in the bill. The bill was only likely to be passed with government support. Despite initial opposition in Scotland to the move, Cameron stated his preference was for the change to apply across the United Kingdom, stating, We are a United Kingdom. I want us to have a united time zone. A survey in late October 2010 of about 3,000 people for British energy firm N Power suggested that a narrow majority of Scots may be in favour of this change, though the Scottish government remained opposed. The bill was debated again in Parliament in November 2011 and sent to committee in December 2011. In January 2012, the bill was again debated on the floor of the House of Commons where it was filibustered out of Parliament by opponents. Angus McNeil, MP for Na H. Eilianen and IAR, argued that it would adversely affect the population of northern Scotland, while Jacob Rees-Mogg, MP for North East Somerset, tried to introduce an amendment to give Somerset its own time zone, 15 minutes behind London, in order to highlight what he saw as the absurdities of the bill. With all its allocated time used up, the bill could proceed no further through Parliament. See also Daylight saving time by country Lighting up time 
Time in the Republic of Ireland Western European Summer Time